Hey, we're happy to be with you today talking about the week of prayer. Today we're going to be talking about the power of prayer and evangelism. We're honored to be today with someone that's no stranger to any of you, Pastor Choco De Jesus, our general treasurer, who whenever I hear him speak and I'm around him, you can discern and tell that this is a man of prayer. So as he shares today, it's not just something that he read or something that he heard in a sermon. He's a man of prayer. So, so Pastor, tell us, when you think of prayer, how has that impacted you personally and your ministry? Yeah, first of all, thank you. And for those who are watching for this opportunity to speak into your lives and to your ministry. Prayer is a foundational for me. When I was pastoring the church in Chicago, uh, every morning I would just get up and get in the presence of God, Joe. Mm. It was crucial for me. Mm. I have always said, even when on Sunday mornings, when I went to go preach, I would pray. And this was my prayer. God, if you're not with me, I don't want to do this. There's no need for me to preach if your presence is not with me. So prayer for me was always that conduit. It connected me. Uh, before I went into battle, prayer went before me. Before I went to a building decision, mm. prayer went before me. Before I went into a discipling moment, prayer. So it's, it was very paramount for me to make sure that I was always in tune uh, with the Lord. So prayer is a weapon, right? That, mm. that the Lord has given us a mechanism to, to have some connection with him. And I tell people, Joe, back in Chicago, and I, as I travel across the country, I say, when we open the Bible, God speaks to us. When we pray, we speak to him. And so why wouldn't we want to speak to yeah. him? So prayer is important. You know, that reminds me of something Leonard Ravenhill said. He said, a prepared heart is much more powerful than a prepared sermon. Now we know that we've got to prepare to preach. Yeah. We've got to study and show ourselves approved. But there's something about prayer that releases an anointing on the proclamation. And, you know, Daniel uh, was a man who led in right. Babylon. He was uh, an advisor to the king. Right. And he was a great leader. And they told Daniel, you're not allowed to pray. Yeah. You got to shut it down. Yeah. It would have been easy for him to do that. Yeah. I bet you people around him said, you know, Daniel, during this time, we need you next to the king. Mm. Calm the prayer down, but he understood his prayer life was more important than his role as a leader. Mm -hmm. So prayer outweighed leadership. When we look at uh, the church today, what would you say to that? Prayer, leadership, the combination? Yeah, I think when, when you look at that, people in leadership who don't value prayer, mm. perhaps value more position than the prayer part mm. of it. Because we, we go up this ladder. And when you get it to a place where we're at, Joe, uh, you really, really talk less and you listen more mm. and, and you pray more. When you get into a leadership capacity, when you're a lead pastor, when you're an evangelist, yeah. you probably want to talk less to, 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 so that people can hear you and probably talk more to God. Because that's important. When you pray over positions and, and, and leadership capacity, it's important because God is the one who elevates you in the leadership capacity. Yeah. And so I think you need to realize, and the listeners, who are, whoever's watching this, that if you desire leadership, boy, you better be a man and a woman that's on your knees. Mm. And it's not just a 20-minute prayer. It's not 30 minutes of devotion in the day. I'm talking about 24-7 constant. Yeah. I don't stop praying. I may be in the elevator. I may be driving. I may be in a plane. I'm always connected. Yeah. Praying, 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 praying. Yeah. It's tuned with the Lord because I, I don't know when the Lord wants me to, to say something to somebody on a plane or somebody at an airport, and I got to be in a place to discern. Yeah. So it's not just 30 minutes at four o'clock in the morning. It's a constant, constant communication with the Lord. I, I love that. that. That's so good. And, and today we're talking about prayer and evangelism. Yeah. And evangelism is the proclamation of the gospel. Sure. It's not just inviting someone to church. No. It's not just handing out a bottle of water and saying, bless you in the name of the Lord, which is good. Right, right. It's not just handing out invitations to uh, an event a church is doing, which we all should do. 
Uh, evangelism is the proclamation that Jesus is a king. Right. He died on a cross. He rose from the dead, and we've got to repent. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that, how, when, when you had your church, personally, whatever you'd like to share, how you have seen the power of evangelism defined through the proclamation of the gospel. Yeah, and that's a good point because some people believe that, you know, uh, evangelism is apologetics. That's not evangelism. Right. Uh, some other folks would say evangelism is sharing my testimony. Right. And I would say, no, that's not evangelism. <laughs> right. Testimony uh, comes alongside the gospel, but it, nobody gets saved because of your testimony. It's about the, the proclamation of the mm. gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Uh, and here's what Spurgeon said about evangelism. Evangelism, he said, is one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. And Jesus is the bread of life. And so when you think about evangelism, if you're going to, in Chicago, anytime we did an outreach show, we, we first prayed about it. There's no way I'm going to invade a city or invade a community where the, the demons are loose and I don't go in there before prayer. Yeah. So you need to be able, pastors, you need to be able to tether prayer with evangelism. If you're going, if you have a heart for reaching schools and things of that nature and doing evangelism, that's great. That that's social work and, and that that's that's important in a community. We did that in Chicago. But you need to know that evangelism is the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ changing lives. At the end of the day, we need to tell them about Jesus Christ. Yes, you can give them a book bag, give them a grocery bag, that's, that's important, but they need to know about Jesus. He's the only one that can change a life. He's the only one that can heal a life of a broken heart. It's only Jesus. That, that is so good. It reminds me of something the late evangelist Reinhard Bonnke said. Mm -hmm. He used a metaphor and he took a jet plane, an F-16, and he said that prayer is like the button that detonates the bomb. Mm. And bo the bomb is the evangelism. And if you have a powerful weapon but nothing to detonate it with, mm. uh, it's useless. That's good. And if you have a detonator with no bomb, it's useless. But when you have prayer, the detonation with the bomb of the gospel, you are able to do great damage to the kingdom of hell. And I, I love your combination of before you did outreach in Chicago when we were there. Mm -hmm. I mean, my God, if you don't pray before you go yeah. into an area like that, you're toast. Yeah, I mean, it, we, people need to realize that it is a mechanism, it is a weapon that God has given us to invade darkness. Just yeah. like repentance, it's a mechanism that's in place for us to come closer to God. So is prayer that God has left us that weapon to use to invade darkness. Yeah. Why wouldn't we want to go in with the backing yeah. of the Holy Spirit, the backing yeah. of the kingdom of God? And so many times what happens, Joe, you've got people in ministry that just put this on cruise control. And they say, we got this. We got, you know, a thousand book bags. We're going to do haircuts, da, da, da. And they never once prayed about it. Yeah. Never once. And that's just, what you have there is a social gospel. And again, there's nothing wrong with the book bags and the haircut. But if I don't have the proclamation of the gospel, all we did was gave them a social gospel. Yeah. There's no metamorphosis. There's no transformation that has occurred here in the life of a community, of an individual. So I, I'm glad you're talking about this because so many times we do evangelism, but not prayer. Right. Then we pray so much and we do nothing. And so we need to be able to bring those two together. And I've always said this, Joe, I said, with revelation comes responsibility. When God reveals to us the condition of our community, we should pray for sure but then we should act. Yes. We should act. And so those things going together makes a ministry powerful. Yeah. It makes an individual powerful. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to make this everyday life, not just mm -hmm. I get up at five o'clock and I do my devotions and I pray, and then the next 23 hours and a half, I never had communicated with the Lord. No, I want you to always be in tune with the Holy Spirit as you travel across this country that God can use you at any moment because you've been in tune with the Lord. You know, it re that reminds me of something else evangelist Reinhard Bonnke said. He said you could pray on your knees 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 
and America will still go to hell right. until somebody gets up off of their knees, right. goes to their neighbor, and knocks on the door. And really, when we think strategy and uh, administration and getting people that, that know how to build a church, you know, I just look to the apostles. Yeah. I look to Jesus. He was filled with the Spirit in Luke 3. He was led by the Spirit to fast and pray 40 days before he ever preached one message. Jesus had not preached yet. He gave us a pattern. And then he proclaimed, mm -hmm. there is power in prayer and proclamation together. So what, what, what would you say about that, Pastor Choco? I think when you look at the apostles and you look at the life of Jesus and they model certain things, it was for us to look at so that we too can model it. Somehow we think we're smarter than the apostles. Somehow we think we're probably smarter than Jesus. But anytime there was a crisis, anytime there was a problem, Esther, let's pray and fast. Yes. Anytime there was a situation, Nehemiah, yes. the Bible says when he heard about the problem, he went for three months and prayed about it. Yeah. He prayed. And out of that prayer life, the Lord gave him a plan. Here's what you're going to do. Yeah. And so I think we need to understand that if in the Bible it worked for them, why wouldn't you think it worked for us? Yeah. To be able to spend time in prayer. When Jesus was with the disciples and he says, why don't you stay here for an hour and just, just sit here and I'm going to come over here. And he came back and he says, could you not pray for one hour? I mean, he was trying to teach them the importance of staying in tune because crisis is coming. Yeah. Crisis is coming. And so if they modeled it, if Jesus modeled it, and there are other leaders in the Bible that modeled it, who are we? Who are we to think that we're smarter than them, that we don't need to model prayer life to be able to share the gospel? I want to just encourage those who are watching this. You need to take this very serious. We're in a battle. Hmm. This is, all hell is bringing loose yeah. against God's people. And the weapon we have that we can move forward with is prayer. To be able to come against the schemes of the devil and the strategies of the enemy is through a man and a woman who's a prayer warrior. Amen. You know, Pastor Choco, when you turn on the news, any news cycle, we see immediately yeah. that we don't need another well-to-do event, charismatic preacher, good articulation, mm -hmm. another degree. We need spirit-empowered, prayer-filled individuals, laity and leader alike, that proclaim the gospel. And... I want to say this, and then you, you can wrap us up, Pastor, and share anything that I want you to pray for everyone. But I just feel led to say this right now. Any strategy or church growth formula that does not have prayer as the key foundation, if you can go through this with marketing and graphics and good speaking and atmosphere, and prayer is not a marquee. It is the apostolic strategy, prayer mm. and proclamation. That's good. That's good. So I want to submit to you, laity and leader alike, if you're going through this without a desperation to God, mm. that needs to shift in our strategy. Wouldn't mm. you say, Pastor? I, listen, I, I think you've said it well, Joe. And, and again, for those who are watching, we have come to a place in America where the church needs to take serious their prayer life, where every lay person, every priest, every prophet, every evangelist to take their prayer life serious. We're not going to win just because we've got good charisma or we've got a great bulletin or we've got great lightings in our church. That's not gonna save people. It's not gonna save people. We've seen the shift in this pendulum of people coming back to the altar coming back to the presence of God. And if you want to have success in your ministry, prayer is paramount. Number one, prayer. Then tell her that with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Get the word out. Get about who Jesus is. Forget about my testimony that doesn't save people. Apologetics doesn't save people. Social gospel doesn't save people. We just feed them. And it's important, don't get me wrong, cutting people's hair and giving them a book bag. That's important, but it doesn't save them. Only the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you do that, boy, I'm telling you, a scared world, Joel, a scared world needs a fearless church. A church that prays 
and moves the hand of God in favor. So let me pray for you all that are watching. And I prayed at this moment here together about prayer. It mobilizes your people. It provokes their spirit to be in the presence of God. So let me pray. Yes. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you. We thank you, dear Lord, for the access, access that we have to your throne. Thank you, dear Lord, that you taught us in your word the importance of getting away and seeking your presence. I pray for every young leader. I pray for those that are aspiring to be leaders, dear God, that they would understand that a prayer life is more important than a title. Mm. Oh God, I pray for the pastors, lead pastors that right now, that they would shift their congregation into a place, dear God, of a war zone, that we are yes. in a spirit of war against the church, so that our people would call on heaven. So we knock on heaven's door right now, Lord, and we pray for a move, and we thank you in advance for what's about to happen in America. We thank you, dear Lord, that people will come to know Jesus Christ because your people are out in the street evangelizing and sharing the proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ. So I pray for a pastoral blessing yes. upon my brothers and sisters here today. In Jesus' name, we ask you this. Amen and amen and amen. Lord bless you all.